welcome to the Shakespeare Sonnets Marathon. This is our ongoing not celebration, commemoration of Shakespeare's death anniversary. So this is the big week where uh, everywhere, I think around colleges and universities at least in this country, they're having lots of events dedicated to Shakespeare's lives and works. And um, we thought it would be fun if we modified our usual Shakespeare's reading that we've been doing the last few semesters. So we usually read a play every semester, but we wanted to do a marathon reading of something that would mark this as a more special occasion. And so we thought we would choose the sonnets because that would give 154 chances for us to read uh, together. So that's the aim. So uh, I hope you'll enjoy reading and listening to others read. And once you read, you can take the bookmarks at any time. But once you read, you can grab one of the stickers and <laughs> display around campus the fact that you read a sonnet today. Okay, so that's <laughs> And uh, as always, I want to thank the Hendricks Murphy Foundation for taking on my ideas and making sure we do them in this elaborate fashion. And we have a sign-up sheet. We got a lot of participation uh, on campus today, so I'm hoping the next three hours will be fun. And when you're walking around with your stickers, encourage others to stop <laughs> by, because you'll be going till after 7 or so. Okay, so uh, what I'll do, I have the list with me of people who signed up, so I'll just call your name and you'll read. And there are books around you, so look for them. And if there is no one signed up uh, for some sonnets, then anyone is free to read, so you might have to fight for them. Okay, so sonnet one, Kelsey Stimmick. Hopefully. From fairest creature we desire increase, that thereby beauty's rose might never die, but as the ripper should by time decease, his tender air might bear his memory. But thou, contracted to thine own bright eyes, feeds thy light flame with thy self-substantial fuel, making a famine where abundance lies, thyself thy foe to thy sweet self too cruel. Thou art now the world's fresh ornament, and only herald to the gaudy spring, within thine own bud buries thy content, and tender churl, makest waste in the garden, pity the world or else this glutton be, to eat the world's dew by the grave in thee. Sonnet two, Bobby and When forty winters shall besiege thy brow and dig deep trenches in thy beauty's field, thy youth's proud livery, so gazed on now, will be a tattered weed of small worth held. Then, being asked where all thy beauty lies, where all the treasure of thy lusty days, to say, within thine own deep sunken eyes, where an all eating shame and thriftless, thriftless praise. How much more praise deserve thy beauty's use, if thou couldst answer, this fair child of mine shall sum my count and make my old excuse, proving his beauty by succession thine. This were to be new made when thou art old, and see thy blood warm when thou feel'st it cold. Sonnet 3, Ebony Ivory. Look in thy glass and tell the face thy views. Now is the time that face should form another, whose fresh repair if now thou not renewest. Thou dost view the world, unbless some mother. For where is she so fair, whose unmeared womb disdains the tillage of thy husbandry? Or who is he so fond with the tomb, or his self love? to stop my spirit. Thou art thy mother's glass, and she in thee calls back the lovely April of the prime. So thou through windows of thine age shalt see, despite of wrinkles, this thy golden time. But if thou live remembered not to be, thy single, and thy images with thee. Son of four, and Jenkins. Unthrifty loveliness, why dost thou spend upon myself thy beauty's legacy? Nature's bequest gives nothing but doth win, and being frank she lends to those are free. Then beauteous Nagar, why dost thou abuse the boundless largest given thee to give? Profitless usurer, why dost thou use so great a sum of sums yet canst not live? For having traffic with thyself alone, 
Thou of thyself, thy sweet self, dost deceive, then how when nature calls thee to be gone, what acceptable audit canst thou leave? Thy unused beauty must be tuned with thee, which used lives the executor to be. Those hours that with gentle work did frame the lovely gaze where every eye doth dwell, will play the tyrants to the very same, in that unfair which fairly doth excel. For never resting time leads summer on to hideous winter and confounds him there. Sap checked with frost and lusty leaves quite gone, beauty or snow and bareness everywhere. Then, were not summer's distillation left, a liquid prisoner pent in walls of glass, beauty's effect with beauty were bereft, nor it nor no more remembrance what it was. But flowers distill, though they with winter meet, least but their show, their substance still lives sweet. Then let not winter's ragged hand deface in thee thy summer, ere thou be distilled. Make some sweet vial, treasure thou some place with beauty's treasure, ere it be self-killed. That use is not forbidden usury, which happy is those that pay the willing loan. That's for thyself to breed another thee, or ten times happier, be it ten for one. Ten times happy thyself were happier than thou art, if ten of thine ten times refigured thee. Then what could death do, if thou shouldst depart, leaving thee living in prosperity? Be not self-willed, for thou art much too fair to be death's conquest, and make worms thine heir. Seven, Johnny Anderson. <clears throat> Lo, in the Orient, when the gracious light lifts up his burning head, each under eye, doth homage to his new appearing sight, serving with looks his sacred majesty, and having climbed the steep up heavenly hill, resembling strong youth in his middle age, yet mortal looks adore his beauty still, attending on his golden pilgrimage. But when from highmost pitch with wary Weary car, like feeble age he relet from the day. The eyes, for duteous now converted, are from his low track, and look another way. So thou, thyself outgoing in thy noon, unlooked on, deest unless thou get a son. Music to hear, why hearest thou music sadly? Sweets with sweets war not, joy delights in joy. Why lovest thou which thou receivest not gladly, or else receivest with pleasure thine annoy? If the true concord of well-tuned sounds by unions married do offend thine ear, they do but sweetly chide thee who confounds in singleness the parts that thou shouldest bear. Mark how one string, sweet husband to another, strikes each and each by mutual order, resembling sire and child and happy mother, who all in one, one pleasing note do sing, whose speechless song, being many seeming one, sings this to thee, thou single wilt prove none. Song nine, Ian Jenkins. Is it for fear to wed the widow's eye that thou consumest thyself in single life? Ah, if thou issueless shalt have to die, the world will wail thee like a makeless wife. The world will be thy widow and still weep that thou no form of thee hast left behind, when every private widow well may keep by children's eyes her husband's shape and mind. Look what an unthrift in the world doth spend, shifts but his place, for still the world enjoys it. But beauty's waste hath in the world an end, and kept unused the user so destroys it. No love toward others in that bosom sits, that on himself such murder of shame commits. For shame, deny that thou bearest love to any, who for thyself art so unprovident. Grant, if thou wilt, thou art beloved of many, but that thou none lovest is most evident. For thou art so possessed with murderous hate, against thyself thou stick'st not in fire. Seeking that beauteous roof to ruinate, which to repair should be thy chief desire. Oh, change thy thought, that I may change my mind. Shall hate be fairer lodged than gentle love? Be, as thy presence is, gracious and kind. 
or to thyself at least kind-hearted prove. Make thee another self for love of me, that beauty still may live in thine or thee. As fast as thou shalt wane, so fast thou growest in one of thine, from that which thou departest. And to that fresh blood which youngly thou bestowest, thou mayst call thine when thou from youth convertest. Herein abides wisdom, beauty, and increase. Without this, folly, age, and cold decay. If all were minded so, the times should cease, and threescore year would make the world away. But those whom nature hath not made for store, harsh, featureless, and rude, barrenly perish. Look whom she best endowed, she gave the more, which bounteous gift thou shouldst in bounty cherish. She carved thee for her seal, and meant thereby thou shouldst print more, not let that copy die. When I do count the clock that tells the time, and see the brave day sunk in hideous night, when I behold the violet past prime, and sable curls all silvered o'er with white, when lofty trees I see barren of leaves, which erst from heat did canopy the herd, and summer's green, all girded up in sheaves, borne on the beard with white and bristly beard. Then of thy beauty do I question make, that thou among the wastes of time must go, since sweets and beauties do themselves forsake, and die as fast as they see others grow. And nothing against time's side can make defense save greed, to brave him when he takes thee hence. Side 13, Oh, that you were yourself, but love you are, no longer yours than you yourself here live. Against this coming end, you should prepare, and your sweet semblance to some other give. So should that beauty which you hold in lease find no determination, then you were yourself again after yourself's decease, when your sweet issue, your sweet form should bear. Who lets so fair a house fall to decay, which husbandry in honor might uphold, against the stormy gusts of winter's day and barren rage of death's eternal cold? Oh, none but unthrifts. Dear my love, you know, you had a father. Let your son say so. So we have our first missing reader. It's out of 14. Does anyone here? I think no. <laughs> Not from the stars do I my judgment pluck, and yet methinks I am a <coughs> But not to tell of good or evil luck, of plagues, of dearths, or seasons quality. Nor can I fortune to brief minutes tell, pointing to each his thunder, rain, and wind. Or say with princes, if it shall go well, I oft predict that I in heaven find. But from mine eyes my knowledge I derive, and constant stars in them I read such art, as truth and beauty shall together thrive. If from thyself to store thou wouldst convert, or else of thee this I prognosticate, thy end is truth's and beauty's doom and thee. Sarah, Sarah sends her apologies and also a, she texted me this. Thank 
conceit and this inconstant stay sets you most rich in youth before my sight. Where wasteful time debateth with decay to change your day of youth to sullied night. And all in war with time for love of you, as he takes from you, I engraft you new. Sonnet 16, Catherine Penn. But wherefore do not you a mightier way make war upon this bloody tyrant time and fortify yourself in your decay, which means more blessed than my barren rhyme? Now stand you on the top of happy hours and many maiden gardens yet unsaid, <coughs> with virtuous wish would bear your living flowers much liker than your painted counterfeit. So should the lines of life that life repair, which this time's pencil or my pupil pen, neither in inward worth nor outward fare can make you live yourself in the eyes of men. To give away yourself keeps yourself still, and you must live drawn by your own sweet skill. Psalm 17, Catherine Klein. Who will believe my verse in time to come, if it were filled with your most high deserts? Though yet heaven knows it be but a, as a tomb, which hides your life and shows not half your parts. If I could write the beauty of your eyes, and in fresh numbers number all your graces, the age to come would say this poet lies, such heavenly touches never touched earthly faces. So should my papers, yellowed with their age, be scorned like old men of less truth than tongue, and your true rights be termed a poet's rage, and stretched neither of an antique soul. But were some child of yours alive that time, you should live twice, and in it, in it and in my rhyme. Shall I compare thee to a summer's day? Thou art more lovely and more temperate. Rough winds do shake the darling buds of May, and summer's least hath all too short a date. Sometime too hot the eye of heaven shines, and often is his gold complexion dimmed. And every fair from fair sometime declines by chance or nature's changing course and trimmed. But thy eternal summer shall not fade, nor lose possession of that fair thou owest, nor shall death break thou wanderest in his shade when in the eternal lines to time thou growest. So long as men can breathe or eyes can see, so long lives this, and this gives life to thee. Psalm 19, Ebony Henry. Devouring time, blunt thou the lion's paws, and make the earth devour her own sweet brood. Pluck the keen teeth from the fierce tiger's jaws, and burn the long lived phoenix in her blood. Make glad and sorry seasons as thou fleece, and do whatever thou wilt. Sweet footed time. To the wide world and all her fading sweets, but I forbid thee one of the most heinous crimes. O oh, carve not with thy hours my love's fair brow, nor draw no lines there with the thine antique pen. Him in thy course untainted do allow for beauty's pattern to succeed in men. Yet do thy worst, O oh, time, despite thy wrong, my love shall in my verse ever live young. We have an antique for Sonic 20. A woman's face with nature's own hand painted, Hast thou the master mistress of my passion? A woman's gentle heart, but not acquainted, With shifting changes, as is false woman's fashion, An eye more bright than theirs, less false in rolling, Gilding the object whereupon it gazeth, A man in hue, all hues in his controlling, which steals men's eyes and women's souls amazing. And for a woman wert thou first created, till nature as she wrought thee fell a, do a doting, excuse me, and by addition me of thee defeated, by adding one thing to my purpose, nothing. But since she pricked thee out for woman's pleasure, mine be thy love and thy love's use their treasure. <laughs> So it is not with me as with that muse, stirred by a painted beauty to his verse, who heaven itself for ornament doth use, and every fair with his fair doth rehearse, making a compliment of proud compare, with sun and moon, with earth and seas, rich gems, 
with April, April's firstborn flowers and all things rare, that heaven's air in this huge rend oh goodness, rendure, ooh, sorry, hymns, oh let me true in love, but truly right. And then believe me, my love is as fair as any mother's child, though not so bright. As those gold candles fixed in heaven's air, let them say more that like of hearsay well. I will not praise that purpose not to sell. So I'm trying to, Sarah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> My glass shall not persuade me I am old, so long as youth and thou are of one date. But when in thee time's furrows I behold, then look I death my days should expiate. For all that beauty that doth cover thee is but the seemly raiment of my heart, which in thy breast doth live as thine in me. How can I then be elder than thou art? O oh, therefore, love, be of thyself so wary as I, not for myself, but for thee, will. Bear in thy heart, which I will keep so cherry as tender nurse her babe from faring ill. Presume not on thy heart when mine is slain. Thou gavest me thine, not to give back again. Sonnet 23, Dylan Gilby. I'm an unperfect actor on the stage, who with his fear is put beside his part. For some fierce thing repeat with too much rage, his strength and bonds weakens his own heart. So I, the fear of trust, forget to say the perfect ceremony of love's right. And in my own love's strength seem to decay, or a charge with burden of my own love's mind. Oh, let my looks be given to the elephants, and them presages of the speaking rest, who plead for love and look for free confidence. More than more than that time that hath more expressed. A learn to read what silent love hath read, to hear with eyes belongs to love's fine So I have turned forward to My eyes have played the painter in half self, thy beauty's form and table of my heart. My body is the frame where is his hell, and perspective is the way, the best painter's art. For through the painter must you see his skill, to find where your true image is your lie. Which in my bosom shall the same still that hath his blood blaze with thine eye. Now see what good turns I for eyes have done. My eyes have drawn my shape and thine for me. Our windows to my breast were through the sun, the lights to keep to gaze therein on thee. Their eyes as cunning want to give grace their art. They draw up but what they see, and have not with their heart. So I turn five, turn it down. When those who are in favor with their stars and public honor and proud titles boast, whilst I, whom fortune of such triumph bars, and looked for joy in that I honor most. Great princes' favorites their fair leaves spread, but as the marigold at the sun's eye, and in themselves their pride lies buried, for at a frown they in their glory die. The painful warrior famous for fight, after a thousand victories once foiled, is from the book of honor raised quite, and all the rest forgot that it Then happy I that love and that love, where I may not renew or be removed. So I'm 26, Carl. Lord of my love, to whom in vassals, Thy merit hath my duty strong commitment. To thee I send this written ambassage. To witness duty, not to show my wit. Duty so great, which wit so poor as mine, may make seem bare, and wanting words to show it. But that I hope some good conceit of thine, and thy soul's thought, all naked will be stood. To whatsoever star that guides my moving, points out, points on me graciously the fair aspect and puts apparel on thy tattered bone, to show me worthy of thy sweet respect. Then may I dare to boast how I do love thee, till then not show my head where thou mayest prove me. Sorry, 27, 10, Jenna. Weary with toil, I haste me to my bed, the dear repose for thence we travel through. But then begins a journey in my head to work my mind when the body's works inspired. For then my thoughts from far where I abide intend a zealous pilgrimage to thee, and keep my drooping eyelids open wide, 
looking on darkness which the blind do see. Save that my soul's imaginary sight presents thy shadow to my sightless view, which hung like a which like a jewel hung in ghastly night, make black makes black night beauteous in her old face new. Lo, thus by day my limbs, by night my mind, for thee and for myself no quiet. How can I then return in happy plight that am, that am debarred the benefit of rest? When day's oppression is not eased by night, but day by night and night by day oppressed, and each, though enemies to either reign, do in consent shake hands to torture me, the one by toil, the other to complain, how far I, I toil, still farther off from thee. I tell thee, day, to please him, though our, thou art right, and douse him great grace when clouds do blot the heaven. So flatter I, I thee, swat complexion night, when sparkling stars twire not thou, gliadest thee even. But day doth daily draw my sorrows longer, and night doth nightly make grief's strength seem stronger. You're entering that zone. <laughs> when in disgrace with fortune and men's eyes, I all alone will meet my outcast state, and trouble deaf heaven with my bootless cries, and look upon myself and curse my fate, wishing me like to one more rich in hope, featured like featured like him, like him with friends possessed. Desiring this man's art and this man's scope, with what I most enjoy, content and least. Yet in these thoughts, myself almost de despair Ooh, gosh. despising. Happily, I think on thee, and then my state. Like to the lark at break of day arising, from sullen earth sings hymns at heaven's gate. For thy sweet love, remembered such wealth, brings that then I scorn to change my state with kings. Sonnet 30. Jordan Forrest. When to the sessions of sweet silent thought I summon up remembrance of things past, I sigh the lack of many a thing I sought, and with old woes new wail my dear time's waste. Then can I drown an eye unused to flow, for precious friends hid in death's dateless night, and weep afresh love's long since cancelled woe, and moan the expense of many a vanished sight. Then can I grieve at grievances foregone, and heavily from woe to woe tell over the sad account of poor bemoaned moan, which I do pay as if not paid before. But if the while I think on thee, dear friend, all losses are restored, and sorrows end. Thy bosom is endeared with all hearts, which I, by lacking, have supposed dead. And there reigns love in all love's loving hearts, and all those friends which I thought buried. How many a holy and absent priest tear hath dear religious love stolen from thine eye, as interest of the dead which now appear, but things removed that hidden in thee lie. Thou art the grave where buried love doth live, hang with the trophies of my lovers gone who all their parts of me to thee did give. But do of many now is thine alone. Their images I love in thee, and thou all day hast thought of all of me. So I'm to Sheena. Mm -hmm. Sonnet 32, Sheena. If thou survive my well-contented day, when natural death my bones with dust shall cover, and shalt thy fortune once more resurvey these poor rude lines of thy deceased lover, Compare them with the bettering of time, and though they be outstripped by every pen, reserve them for my love, not for their rhyme, exceeded by the height of, a, of happier men. Oh, then vouchsafe me but this loving thought. Had my friend's muse grown with this growing age, a dearer birth than this his love had brought to march in ranks of better equipage, 
But since he died, and poets better prove, theirs for their style I'll read, his for his love. Psalm 33, Victoria Tang. Full many a glorious morning I have seen, flatter the mountain tops with sovereign eye, kissing with golden face the meadows green, gilding pale streams with heaven alchemy. Anon permit the basest clouds to ride, with ugly wrap on his celestial face, and from the forlorn world of his visage hide, stealing unseen to west with this disgrace. Even so, my sun one early morn did shine, with all triumphant splendor on my brow. But out, alack, he was one, but he was but one hour mine. The region cloud hath masked him from me now. Yet him, for this my love, no wit disdaineth. Sons of the world may stain when heaven's sun staineth. Son of why didst thou promise such a beauteous day, and make me travel forth without my cloak, to let base clouds o'ertake me in my way, hiding thy bravery in their rotten smoke? Tis not enough that through the clouds thou break, to dry the rain on thy storm-beaten face. For no man well of such a saw can speak, that heals the wound that cures not the disgrace. Nor can thy shame give physique to my grief. Though thou repent, yet I still have the loss. The offender's sorrow lends but weak relief. To him that bears this strong offense's cross. Ah, but those tears are pearl which thy love sheds, and they are rich in ransom all ill deeds. Son of Victoria Tang. No more be grieved at that which thou hast done. Roses have thorns, and silver fountains mud. Clouds and eclipses stain both moon and sun, and loathsome canker lives in sweetest bud. All men make faults, and even I in this. Authorizing thy trespass with compare, myself corrupting, salving thy amiss. Excuse thy sins more than thy sins are. For thy essential fault I bring incense. Thy adverse party is thy advocate, and against myself a lawful plea commence. Such civil war is in my love and hate, that I necessary needs must be to that sweet thief which sadly robs from me. Let me confess that we too must be twain, although our undivided loves are one. So shall those blots that do with me remain, without thy help but me, be born alone. In our two loves there is but one respect, though in our lives a separable spite, which though it alter not love's sole effect, yet doth it steal sweet apples from love's delight. I may not evermore acknowledge thee, lest my bewailed guilt should do thee shame, nor thou with public kindness honor me, unless thou take that honor from thy name. But do not so. I love thee in such sort, as thou being mine, mine is thy good Lord. We're entering the zone of no signups. One for a <laughs> As a decrepit father takes delight to see his active child do deeds of youth, so I, made lame by fortune's dearest spite, take all my comfort from of thy worth and truth. For whether beauty, birth, or wealth, or wit, or any of these all, or all, or more, entitled in thy hearts do crown sit, I make my love engrafted to this store. So then I am not lame, poor, nor despised, whilst th that this shadow doth get such substance give, that I in thy abundance am suffice, and by a part of all thy glory live. Look what is best, that best I wish in thee, this wish I have, then ten times happy me. How can my muse one subject to invent? While thou, while thou dost breathe, that pourest into my verse, thine own sweet argument too excellent. For every vulgar paper to rehearse, O oh, give thyself the thanks if I if aught in me. Worthy per usual, per, per usual, stand against thy sight. For who is so dumb that cannot write to thee, when thou thyself dost give invention and delight? Be thou the tenth muse, ten times more in worth than those old nine which rhymers indicate. 
And he that calls on thee, let him bring forth eternal numbers to outlive long date. If my slight muse do please these curious days, the pain be mine, but thine shall be the praise. Sonnet 39. Oh how, uh, oh, how thy work of matters may I sing, when thou art all the better part of me. What can my own praise to my own self bring? And what is it but mine own when I praise thee? Even for this let us divide, divided lives, and our dear love lose name of single one, that by this separation I may give, that due to thee which thou deservest alone, O oh, absence, what a torment what wouldst thou prove? Were it not thy sour leisure gave sweet leave to entertain the time and thoughts of love, which time and thoughts so sweetly doth deceive, and that thou teachest how to make one twain, by praising him who doth hence remain? <coughs> Take all my loves, my love, yeah, take them all. What hast thou been more than thou hadst before? No love, my love, that thou mayst love, true, may true love call. All mine was thine, for thou hadst this more. Then if for my love thou, my love, receivest, I cannot blame thee for my love thou usest. But yet be blamed if thou this self deceivest. By willful taste of what thyself refuses. I do forgive thy robbery, gentle thief, although thou steal thee all my poverty, and yet love knows it is a greater grief. To bear love's wrong than hate's known injury. Look, last of his grace, in whom all ail well will shows, kill me with spites, but we must not be foes. 41. Those petty wrongs that liberty commits, when I am sometimes absent, sometime absent from thy heart, thy beauty and thy years full well befits, for still temptation follows where thou art. Gentle thou art, and therefore to be won. Beauteous thou art, therefore to be assailed. And when a woman woos, what woman's son will sourly view her till she I me, mean, but yet thou mightest my seat forbear, and try and try thy beauty and thy strength, youth, who lead thee in thy riot, their riot even there, for thou art forced to break a twofold truth. Hers by thy beauty tempting her to thee, thine by thy beauty being false to me. <coughs> That thou hast her, it is not all my grief, and yet it may be said that I loved her dearly. That she hath thee is of my wailing chief, a loss in love that touches me more nearly. Loving offenders, thus I will excuse ye. Thou dost love her because thou knowst I love her, and for my sake even so doth she abuse me. Suffering my friend for my sake to approve her, if I lose thee, my loss is my love's gain. And losing her, my friend hath found that loss. Both find each other, and I lose both twain. And both for my sake lay on me this cross. But here's the joy. My friend and I are one, sweet flattery, and she loves but me alone. When most I wink, then do mine eyes best see. For all the day they do things unrespected. But when I sleep, in dreams they look on me, and darkly bright are bright and dark directed. Then thou, whose shadows shadows doth make bright, how would thy shadows form, form happy show to clear day with thy much fear light? When two unseeing eyes they shade shine so, how would I say mine eyes be blessed made by looking on thee in the living day, when in dead night thy fair and perfect shade through heavy sleep on sightless night eyes doth stay. All days are nights to see till I see thee, and nights bright days when dreams do show thee me. 
If the dull substance of my flesh were thought, injurious distance should not stop my way. For then, despite of space, I would be brought from limits far remote where thou dost stay. No matter then, although my foot did stand upon the farthest earth removed from thee, for nimble thought can jump both sea and land as soon as think the place where he would be. But ah, thought kills me that I am not thought, to leap large lengths of miles when thou art gone. But that so much of earth and water wrought, I must attend time's leisure with my own, receiving not by elements so slow, but heavy tears, badges of either as well. 45. The other two, slight air and purging fire, are both with thee, wherever I abide. The first my thought, the other my desire. These present absent with swift motion slide. For when these quicker elements are gone, in tender embassy of love to thee, my life, being made of four, with two alone, sinks down to death, oppressed with melancholy, until life's composition be reserved. By those swift messengers returning from thee, who even but now come back again, assured of thy fair health, recounting it to me. This told, I joy, but then no longer glad. I send them back again, and straight grow sad. Psalm 46, it's my turn. My eye and heart are at mortal war, how to divide the conquest of thy sight. Mine eye, my heart, thy picture's sight would bar. My heart, mine eye, the freedom of that right. My heart doth plead that thou dost, thou in him dost die. A closet, a closet never pierced with crystal eyes. But the death of defendant doth that plea deny, and says in him thy fair appearance lies. To side this title is empaneled, a quest of thoughts, all tenants to the heart. And by their verdict, is determined, the clear eyes moiety on the dear heart's part, as thus, mine eyes due is thy outward part, and my heart's right thy inward love of heart. Psalm 47. Betwixt mine eye and heart a league is took, and each doth good turns, how now unto the other. When that mine eye is famished for a look, or heart in love with sighs himself doth smother, with my love's picture then my eye doth feast, and to the painted banquet bids my heart. Another time mine eye is my heart's guest, and in his thoughts of love doth share a part. So either by thy picture or my love, thyself away art present and still with me. For thou no farther than my thoughts canst move, and I am still with them, and they with thee. Or if they sleep, thy picture in my sight awakes my heart to hearts, and my eyes delight. How careful I was when I took my way, each trifle under true spars to thrust, that to my use and might in use stay, for hands of falsehood and wards of trust. But thou to whom my jewels trifles are, most worthy comfort, now my greatest grief. Thou best of dearest, in mine only care, art left the prey of every vulgar thief. Be I not locked up in any chest, save where thou art not, thou I feel, though I feel thou art, within the gentle closure of my breast. From whence that pleasure thou mayst come and part, and even thence thou wilt be stolen, I fear. For truth proves thee this for a prize so dear. 49. Against that time, if ever that time come, when I shall see thee frown on my defects, when as thy love hath passed his utmost sum, called to that audit by advice respects, 
against that time when thou shalt strangely pass, and sparsely greet me with the sun, thine eye, when love, converted from the thing it was, shall reason, shall reason find of settled gravity. Against that time do I in, in go my here, near, within the knowledge of mine own desert. And this my hand against myself uprear, to guard the lawful reasons on thy part, to leave for me thou hast the strengths of laws, since why to love I can at least no cause. How heavy do I journey on the way, when will I seek my weary travels end? Doth teach that ease and that were spoke is to say, Thus far the miles are measured from thy friend, the beast that bears me tired with my woe, called slowly on to bear that weight in me, as if by some instinct the wretch did know, his rider loved not speed being made from me. A bloody spur cannot provoke him on, that sometimes anger thrust into his hide, which heavily he answers with a groan, more sharp to me than spurring in to his side. For that same groan doth put this in my mind. My grief lies onward and my joy behind. Thus can my love excuse the slow offense of my dull bearer when I when from thee I speed. From where thou art, why should I haste me thence till I return? Of posting is no need. Oh what excuse would my poor beast then find? When swift extremity can seem but slow, then should I spur it, though mounted on the wind? In winged speed no motion shall I know. Then can no horse with my desire keep pace. Therefore desire of perfect love be made, shall rain no dull flesh in his fiery rays. But love, for love, thus shall excuse my jade. Since from thee going, but willful slow, so it's thee I'll run and give him leave to go. So am I as the rich whose blessed key can bring him to his sweet uplawful treasure. The which he will not every hour survey for blunting the fine point of seldom pleasure. Therefore are feasts so solemn and so rare, since seldom coming in a long year set. Like stones of worth they thinly placed are, or capped in jewels in the carcanet. So is the time that keeps you as my chest, or as the wardrobe with which the rug doth hide, to make some special instant special blessed, by new unfolding his imprisoned pile. Blessed are you whose worthiness gives scope, being had to triumph being lacked to hope. 53. Um, <clears throat> what is your substance? Whereof are you made? That millions of strange shadows on you tend, since everyone hath, every one, one shade, and you but one can every shadow lend. The scribe Adonis and the counterfeit is poorly imitated after you. On Helen's cheek, all art of beauty set, and you in Grecian, Grecian tires are painted new. Speak of the spring and foison of the year, the one doth shadow of your beauty show, the other as your bounty doth appear, and you in every blessed shape we know. In all external grace you have some part, but you like none, none you, for constant heart. <laughs> oh, how much more doth beauty beauteous see by that sweet ornament which truth doth give. The rose looks fair, but fair we yet deem for that sweet odor which doth, it, doth in it live. The canker blooms have full as deep a dye as the perfume tincture of the roses. Hang on such thorns and play as one one calmly with summer's breath their masked buds discloses. 
fought for their virtue only as their show. They live on wound and unrespected fate. Die to themselves, sweet roses do not sow. Of their sweet deaths are sweetest odors made. And so of you, beauteous and lovely youth, when that shade, when that shall fade, by verse distills your truth. Not marble nor the gilded monuments of princes shall outlive this powerful rhyme. But you shall shine more bright in these contents, in these contents, than unswept stone besmeared with sluttish time. When wasteful war shall statues overturn, and broils root out the work of masonry, nor mars his sword, nor, nor war's quick fire shall burn the living record of your memory. Against death and all of ob oblivious enmity shall you pace forth. Your praise shall still find room, even in the eyes of all posterity, that wear this world out to the ending doom. So till the judgment that, that yourself arise, you live in this and dwell in mother's eyes. 56. <clears throat> Sweet love, renew thy force. Be it not said thy edge should blunter be than appetite, which but today by feeding is allayed, tomorrow sharpened in his former might. So love be thou, although today thou fill thy hungry eyes even till they wink with fullness. Tomorrow see again, and do not kill the spirit of love with the petrol perpetual dullness. Let this sad interim like the ocean be, which parts the shore where two contracted new come daily to the banks, that when they see return of love, more blessed may be the view. Or call it winter, which being full of care, makes summer's welcome thrice more wished, more rare. 57, Ryan. Uh, I'll do it. Uh, okay, you, you share it? You want it? Okay, it's 57. <laughs> Being your slave, what should I do but tend upon the hours and times of your desire? I have no precious time at all to spend, no services to do until you require. Nor dare I chide the world without end, hour whilst I, my sovereign, watch the clock for you. Or think the bitterness of absence sour when you have bid your servant once adieu. Nor dare I question with my jealous thought where you may be or your affairs suppose. But like a sad slave, stay and think of not, save where you are, how happy you make those. So true a fool is love that in your will, though you do anything, he thinks no ill. Fifty-eight, Ryan. Yeah. <laughs> that God forbid that made me first your slave. I should in thought control your times of pleasure, or at your hand the count of hours to crave, being your vassal, bound to stay your leisure. Oh, let me suffer being at your beck, the imprisoned absence of your liberty, and patience tamed to sufferance by each chip by each check, without accusing you of injury. Beware, beware your list, your character is so strong that you yourself may privilege your time to what you will. To you it doth belong yourself to pardon of self-doing crime. I am to wait, the waiting so be hell, nor blame your pleasure, be it ill or well. There be nothing new but that which is, hath been before how our, 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 our brains beguil, which laboring for invention bear amiss, the second burden of a former child. Oh, that record could be, could with a backward look, even of five hundred courses of the sun, show me your image in some antique book, since mine at first in character was done, that I might see what the old world could say, to this composed wonder of your frame. Whether we are mended or where better they, or whether revolution be the same. 
Oh, sure, I am the woods of my former days. To subjects worse have given admiring praise. Sixty. Oh. Okay. Oh, <laughs> like as the waves make towards the pebbled shore, so do our minutes hasten to their end. Each changing place with that which goes before, and sequent toil all fords do contend. Nativity, nativity, which in the main of life, crossed to maturity, wherewith being crowned, cricket eclipses against his glory flight, fight, and time that gave doth now his gift confound. Time doth transfix the florist set on youth, and delves the parallels in beauty's brow, feeds on the rarities of nature's truth, and nothing stands but for his sight to mow. And yet to times and hopes my verse shall stand, praising thy worth despite his cruel hand. As if thy will thy image should keep open, my heavy eyelids to the weary night, dost thou desire my slumbers should be broken, while shadows like to thee do mock my sight? Is it thy spirit that thou sendest from thee, so far from home into my deeds to cry, to find out shames and idle hours in me, the scope and tenor of thy jealousy. Oh no, thy love, though much is not so great, it is my love that keeps mine eye awake, mine own true love that doth my rest defeat, to play the watchman ever for thy sake, for thee watch I, whilst thou dost wake elsewhere from me far off with others all too near. Sin of self-love possess, 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 sin of self-love possesseth all mine eye, and all my soul, and all my every part. And for this sin there is no remedy, it is so grounded inward in my heart. Methinks no face so gracious is as mine, no shape so true, no truth of such account. And for myself mine own worth do define, as I all other in all worth surmount. But when my glass shows me myself indeed, beaded and trapped with tanned antiquity, mine own self-love quite contrary I read, self so loving were iniquity. Tis thee myself that for myself I praise, Painting my age with beauty of thy days. Against my love shall be as I am now, with time's injurious hand crushed and overworn, when hours have drained his blood and filled his brow, with lines and wrinkles when his youthful morn have traveled on to age's steepy night, and all those beauties were of now his king are vanishing or banished out of sight, stealing away the treasure of the spring for such a time do I now fortify against confounding ages cruel cool night that he shall never cut from memory. My sweet love's beauty, though my lover's life, his beauty shall in these black lines be seen, and they shall live, and he in them still breathe. 64. All right. when, I, when I have seen by time's spell hand defaced the rich proud cast, the cost of outworn buried age, when sometimes lofty towers I see down raised and brass eternal slave to mortal rage, when I have seen the hungry ocean gain advantage on the kingdom of the shore and the firm soil win of the watery main, increasing store with loss, and loss with store. When I have seen such interchange of state, or state itself confounded to decay, ruin hath taught me thus to ruminate, the time will come and take my love away. This thought is as a death, with cannot ch which cannot choose, but weep to have that which it fears to lose. 65, Susanna. Yes, <laughs> 
Since brass, nor stone, nor earth, nor boundless sea, with sad mortality, pours waste their power, how with this rage shall beauty hold a queen, whose action is no stronger than a flower? Oh, how shall summer's honey breath hold out against the wrathful siege of battering days, when rocks impregnable are not so stout, nor gates of steel so strong, but time decays? Oh, fearful meditation, where, alack, shall time's best jewel from time's chest lie hid? Or what strong hand can hold his swift foot back? Or who his spoiled beauty can forbid? Oh, none, unless this miracle have might, that in black ink my love may still shine bright. Tired with all wings, for a restful death I cry, as to the whole desert of a beggar born, and needing nothing trimmed in jollity, the purest faith unhappily forsworn, and gilded honor shamefully misplaced, and naked virtue rudely struggled, and right perfection wrongfully disgraced, and strength by limping sway disabled, and art made tongue tied by authority. And folly doctor-like controlled skill, and simple truth miscalled simplicity, and captive good attending captain ill. Tired of all these, from these I will be gone. Save that to die, I leave my love. I'm drawing. I guess I skipped the ones I was trying to guess when very fast. You get extra ones. <clears throat> uh, wherefore, with infection should he live, and with his pre presence grace and piety, that sin by him advantage should achieve and lace itself with his society? Why should false painting imitate his cheek, and steel dead seeing of his living hue? Why should poor beauty indirectly seek roses of shadow, since his rose is true? Why should he live, now nature bankrupt is, beggared of blood to blush through lively veins? For she hath no exchicure now but his, and, proud of many, lives upon his gains. O oh, him she stores to show what wealth she had in days long since, before these last look so bad. Before these bastard signs of fair were born, or durst in heaven on a living brow. Before the golden tresses of the dead, the right of sepulchres were shown away to live a second life on a second head. Their beauty's dead fleece made another, made another day. In him, those holy antique hours are seen without all ornament itself and true, making those summer of another screen robbing no old to dress his beauty new. And him, as for a map, doth nature store to show false art what beauty was of yore. Those parts of thee that the world's eye doth be want nothing but the thought of hearts can know. All tongues, the voice of souls, give thee that due uttering bare truth, even so as foes commit. Thy outward thus with outward praises crown, but those same tongues they give thee so, thine own and other accents, do this praise confound by seeing farther than the eye hath shown. They look into the beauty of thy mind, and that and guess they measure by thy deeds. Then in churls their thoughts, although their eyes were kind, to thy fair flower at the rank smell of leaves. But why thy odor matcheth not thy show, the soil is this, that thou dost come and grow. Seventy. Yeah, it's your, it's long, it's long. Okay, I'll do it. Oh. Uh, that thou art blamed shall not thy defect. For Sanders mark was ever yet but there. The ornament of beauty is suspect. A crow that flies in heaven sweetest air. So thou be good, slander not but approve. Thy work thy greater, being wood of time, for crank for canker vice the verse, sweetest buds, love, love, love. And thou presence a pure unstained pride, thou hast passed by the ambush of young days. Either not a cell, or victor being charged. Yet this thy praise 
praise cannot be so thy praise. To tie up envy, evermore enlarged. If some suspect of ill mask, not thy show, that thou alone kingdoms of hearts shouldst owe. I chose the sad one. <laughs> no longer mourn for me when I am dead, then you shall hear the surly, sullen bell. Give warning to the world that I am fled from this vile world with vilest worms to dwell. Nay, if you read this line, remember not the hand, the hand that writ it. For I love you so that in your sweet thoughts would you would yeah that I in your sweet thoughts would be forgot if thinking on me then then should make you woe. Oh oh if I say you look upon this verse when I perhaps compounded am with clay, do not so much as my poor name rehearse, but let your love even with my life decay. Lest the wise world should look into your moan and mock you with me after I am gone. 72, so we're in the free for all now. Is it almost no <laughs> Oh, lest the world should task you to recite what merit lived in me that you should love. After my death, dear love, forgive me quite. For you in me can nothing worthy prove, unless you would devise some virtuous lie to do more for me than mine own desert, and hang more praise upon a deceased eye, and nigger the truth would willingly impart. Oh, lest your true love may seem false in this, that you for love speak well of me and true. My name be buried where my body is, and live no more to shame, nor me, nor you. For I am shamed by that which I bring forth, and so should you to love things nothing worth. 73. <clears throat> that time of year thou makes me behold, when yellow leaves are none, a few do hang upon those boughs which shake against the fold. Their ruin choirs are late, the sweet bird sang. In me thou seest the twilight of such day as after sunset fadeth in the west, which by and by black night doth take away that second self that seals up all in rest. In me thou seest the glowing of such fire that on the ashes of his youth doth lie as the deathbed whereon it must expire, consumed with that which it was nourished by. This thou perceivest which makes thy love more strong, to love that well which thou must leave ere long. 74. Yeah, I'll do it. Okay. <laughs> but be contented when that, that fell arrest, without all bell shall carry me away. My life hath in this line some interest, which for memorial still will be stated, shall stay. When thou reviewest this, thou dost review, the very part was consecrated to thee. The earth can have but earth, which is his due. My spirit is thine, the better part of me. So then thou hast but lost the dregs of life, the prey of worms, my body being dead, the coward compass of a wretched's knife. Too base of thee to be remembered, the worth of that is that which it contains, and that is this, and this with thee remains. 75. <clears throat> so are you to my thoughts as so are you to my thoughts as food to life, or as sweet season showers are to the ground. And for the peace of you I hold such strife, as twixt a miser and his wealth is found. Now pride as an enjoyer and a non, doubting with filching aid will steal his treasure. Now counting best to be with you alone, then better that the world may see my pleasure. Sometime I'll fool with feasting on your sight, and by and by clean starlit for a look, possessing or pursuing no delight, saving what is had or must from you be took. Thus do I pine and surfeit day by day, or gluttony on all or all way. 76. Why is my verse so barren of new pride, 
so far from variation or quick change. Why with the time do I not glance aside to my newfound methods and two compounds strange? Why write I still all one, ever the same, and keep invention in a noted weed, so that, every, so that every word doth almost tell my name, showing their birth and where they did proceed? Oh no, my sweet, sweet love, I always write of you, and you and love are still my argument. So all my best is dressing old words new, spending again what is already spent. For as the sun is daily new and old, so is my love still telling what is told. Thy glass will show thee how thy beauties wear, thy dial how thy precious minutes waste. The vacant leaves thy mind's imprint will bear, and of this book the swaying mayst thou taste. The wrinkles which thy glass will truly show of mouth graves will give thee memory. Thou by thy dial's shady scalp mayst know time's thievish progress to eternity. Look with thy memory cannot contain. Commit to these waste blanks, and thou shalt find these, those children nurse, delivered from thy brain, to take a new acquaintance of thy mind. These offices, so oft as thou wilt look, shall profit thee and much enrich thy book. So oft have I invoked thee for my muse, and found such fair assistance in my verse, as every alien pen hath got my use, and under thee their poesy disperse. Thine eyes, that taught the dumb on high to sing, and heavy ignorance aloft to fly, have added, fe have added feathers to the learned's wing, and given grace a double majesty. Yet be most proud of that which I compile, whose influence is thine and born of thee. In others' works thou dost but mend the style, and arts with thy sweet graces graced be. But thou art all my art, and dost advance as high as learning, as high as learning my rude ignor ignorance. 79. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Which one did I say? 39. <laughs> Whilst I alone did call upon thy aid, my verse alone had all thy gentle grace. But now my gracious numbers are decayed, and my sick muse doth give another place. I grant, sweet love, thy lovely argument deserves the travail of a worthier pen. Yet what of thee, thy poet doth invent, he robs thee off and pays it thee again. He, he lends thee virtue, and he stole that word from thy behavior. Beauty doth, doth, him, doth he give and found it in thy cheek. He can afford no praise to thee, but what in thee doth live. Then thank him not for that which he doth say, since what he owes thee, thou shouldst, thou thyself dost pay. Mm -hmm. Oh, how I faint when I of you do write, knowing a better spirit doth use your name, and in the praise thereof spends all his might to make me tongue-tied speaking of your fame. But since your worth wide as the ocean is, the humble as the proudest sail doth bear, my saucy barquet, inferior far to his, on your bog main doth willfully appear. Your shallowest tub will hold me up afloat, whilst he upon your soundless deep doth ride. Our being wrecked, I am worthless, I am a worthless boat, he of tall building and of godly pride. Then if he thrive and I be cast away, the worst was this, my love was my decay. 81. Or I shall live your epitaph to make, or you survive when I am earth and rotten. From hence your memory death cannot take, although in me each part will be forgotten. Your name from hence and little life shall have, though I am once gone to all the world must die. The earth can yield me but a common grave, when you entombed in men's eyes shall lie. 
Your monument shall, my gentle, shall be my gentle verse, which eyes not yet created shall overhead, overread, and tongues to be your being shall rehearse when all the breathers of this world are dead. You still shall live such virtue hath my pen, for your breath most brief even in the mouths of men. I grant thou wert not married to my muse, and therefore mayst without attain or overlook the dedicated words which writers use of their fair subject blessing every book. Thou art as fair in knowledge as in hue, finding thy worth a limit past my praise, and therefore art enforced to seek anew some fresher stamp of these time-bettering days. And do so, love, Yet when they have devised what strain touches rhetoric can lend, that thou truly fair or truly sympathized in true plain words by thy true telling friend. The basest weed upbraves his dignity, for sweetest things turn sourest by their deeds. Lilies that fester smell far worse than weed. 83. I never oh, oops, sorry. I yes. skipped the page there, sorry. It's all the same. Jumped again, I was like, didn't even. Poetry I never saw that you did painting me, and therefore to your fair new painting set. I found, or thought I found, you did exceed the barren thunder of a poet's death. And therefore have I slept in your report, that you yourself being extant well might show how far a modern quill doth come to short. Speaking of worth, what worth in you did grow? This silence for my sin you did impute, which shall be most my glory being dumb. For I impair not beauty being mute, when others would give life in a tomb. There lives more life in one of your fair eyes than both your poets can and praise devise. <laughs> Who is it that says mo whoa, wait, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, Who is it that says <laughs> Which should example where the people grow? Lean, pen, pen, within that pen doth dwell, that to his subject lends not some small glory, but he that writes of you, if he can tell that you are you, so dignifies his story. Let him but copy that in you is writ. Let him but copy what in you is writ not making worse what nature made so clear, and such a counterpart shall fame his wit. Making his style and admired everywhere, due to your beauteous blessings, and at a curse, being fond on praise, which makes your praises worse. Take a <clears throat> My tongue-tied muse and manners holds her still, while comments of your praise richly compiled reserve thy character with golden quill, and precious phrase by all the muses filled. I think good thoughts whilst other write good words, and like unlettered clerk still cry amen to every hymn that able spirit affords in polished form of well-refined Hearing your praise, I say, tis so, tis true. And to the most of praise add something more, but that is in my thought, whose love to you. The words come behind most, holds his rank before. Then others for the breath of words respect me for my dumb thoughts speaking in effect.
was the proud fool so of his great verse, bound for the prize of all too precious to you. That did my right thoughts of my brain and hers, making their tomb the womb wherein they grew. Was it his spirit by spirits taught, taught to write, above a mortal pitch that struck me dead? No, neither he nor his compeers by night, giving him, giving him aid, my verse astonished. He nor that affable, familiar ghost, which nightly gulls him with intelligence, as victors of my sons cannot boast. I was not sick with any fear from the dance, but when your countenance filled up his line, then lacked I matter that enfeebled line. 87. <clears throat> Farewell, thou art too dear for my possessing, and like enough thou knowest thy estimate. <clears throat> the charter of thy worth gives thee releasing, and my bonds in thee are all determinate. For how do I hold thee but by thy granting? And for that riches, where is my deserving? The cause of this fair gift in me is wanting, and so my patent back again is swerving. My, thyself thou gavest, thy own worth then not knowing, or me to whom thou gavest it, else mistaking, that so thy great gift upon misprison growing comes home again on better judgment making. Thus have I had thee, as a dream doth flatter, and sleep a king, but waking no such matter. When thou shalt be disposed to set wait, here, yeah. when thou shalt be disposed to set me light and place my merit in the eye of scorn, upon thy side against myself I'll fight and prove thee virtuous, though thou art forsworn. With mine own weakness, being best acquainted, upon thy part I can set down a story of fault concealed, wherein I am attained that thou in losing me shall win much glory, and I by this will will be a gainer too, for bending all my loving thoughts on me, the injuries that to myself I do, doing the vantage, double vantage me, such is my love to thee I so belong, that for thy right myself will bear a wrong. Amen. Say that thou didst forsake me for some fault, and I will comment upon that offense. Speak of my lameness, and I will straight go, and I straight will halt. Against thy reasons making no defense, thou canst not love disgrace me half so ill. To set a form upon desired change, as I'll myself disgrace, knowing that will. I will acquaintance stranger. Strangle? Yes. Wow. <laughs> I will, I will acquaintance strangle and look strange. Be absent from thy walks, and in my tongue, thy sweet beloved name no more shall dwell, lest I, too much profane, should do it wrong. And happily of our old acquaintance tell, for thee against myself I'll vow debate, for I must near never love him who thou dost hate. Laura Durham. Then hate me when thou wilt, if ever now, now while the world is bent my deeds to cross, join with the spite of fortune, make me bow, and do not drop in for an after loss. Ah, do not, when my heart hath scraped the sorrow, come in the rearward of a conquered woe, Give not a windy night, a rainy morrow, to linger out a purposed overthrow. If thou wilt leave me, do not leave me last, when other petty griefs have done their spite. But in the onset come, so shall I taste, at first the very worst of fortune's might, and other strains of woe, which now seem woe, compared with loss of thee, will not seem so. Some glory in their birth, some in their skill, some in their wealth, some in their body's force, some in their garments, though newfangled ill, some in their hawks and hounds, 
summon their force. And every humor hath his adjunct pleasure, wherein it finds a joy upon, above the rest. But these particulars are not my measure. All these I better in one general best. Thy love is better than high birth to me, richer than wealth, prouder than garments cost, of more delight than hawks or horses be, and having thee of all men's pride I boast. Wretched in this alone, that thou mayst take all this away, and me most wretched make. But do thy worst to steal thyself away. For term of life thou art assured mine, and life no longer than thy love will stay, for it depends upon that love of thine. Then need I not to fear the worst of wrongs, when in the least of them my life, my life hath end. I see a better state to me belongs than that which on thy humor doth depend. Thou canst not vex me with inconstant mind, since that my life on the revolt doth lie. Oh, what a happy title do I find, happy to have thy love, happy to die. But what's so blessed fair that fears not no blot? Thou mayest be false, and yet I know it not. You should read it. Okay. <laughs> so shall I live, supposing thou art true, like a deceived husband? So love's face may still seem love to me, though altered new. Thy looks with me, thy heart in an other place. For there can live no hatred in thy eye, therefore in that I cannot know thy change. In many's looks, the false heart's history is written moans and frowns and wrinkles strange. But heaven in thy creation did decree that in thy face sweet love shall ever dwell. Whatever thy Whatever thy thoughts or thy heart's workings be, thy looks should nothing thence but sweetness tell. How like Eve's apple doth thy beauty grow, with thy sweet virtue answer not thy show. Yeah. They that have power to hurt and will do none, that do not do the thing they most do show. Who moving others are themselves as stone, and move as a coal, and temptation slow. They rightly do inherit heaven's graces, and husband nature's riches from expense. They are the lords and owners of their faces, others but stewards of their excellence. The summer's flower is to the summer sweet, though to itself it only live and die. But if that flower with base infection to meet. The basest weed outbraves his dignity. For sweetest things turn sourest by their deeds. Lilies that fester smell far worse than weeds. There, I completed the correct poem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just realized. Yeah. Yeah. How sweet and lovely dost thou make the shame which like a canker in the fragrant rose doth spot the beauty of thy budding name. O oh, in what sweets dost thou, thou thy sins enclose? That tongue that tells the story of thy days, making lascivious comments on thy sport, cannot dispraise but in a kind of praise, naming thy name blesses an ill report. Oh, what a mansion have those vices got, which for their habitation chose out thee, where beauty's veil doth cover every blot, and all things turns to fair that eyes can see. Take heed, dear heart, of this large privilege. The hardest knife, ill us, doth lose his edge. Some say thy fault is youth, some want upon this. Some say thy grace is youth and gentle sport. Both grace and faults are loved with more and less. Thou makest faults graces that to thee resort. As on the finger of the throned queen, the basest jewel will, will be well esteemed. So are those errors that in thee are seen, those tr to truth translated and for true things deemed. Yeah. 
How many lambs might a stern wolf betray if like a lamb he could his looks if like a lamb could he could his looks translate? How many gazers might thou lead away if thou wouldst use the strength to all thy state? But do not so, I love thee in such sort, as thou being mine, mine is thy good report. How like a winter hath my absence been, from thee the pleasures of the fleeting year. What freezings have I felt, what dark days hath seen, what old December's bareness everywhere. And yet this time removed was summer's time, the teeming autumn big with rich increase, bearing the wanton burden of the pride, like widowed wombs after the Lord's decease. Yet this abundant issue seemed to me, but hope of but hope of the orphans and unfathered fruit. For summer and his pleasures wait on thee, and thou away, the very birds are mute. Or if they sing, tis with so dull a cheer that leaves look pale, dreading the winter's near. From you have I been absent in the spring, when proud high April dressed in all his trim, hath put a spirit of youth everything. That heavy Saturn laughed and leaped over him. Yet nor the lays of birds, nor the sweet smell of different flowers and odor and hue could make me any summer story tell, or from their proud lap pluck them where they grew. Nor did I wonder at the lilies white, nor praise the deep vermilion in the rose. They were but sweet, but figures of delight. Yet seemed it winter still, and you away, as with your shadow I would be still. We'll do it. Are we being videotaped? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Boy. I just realized yeah. that. My sign and release on that. Um, <laughs> the forward fires, thus did I chide. Sweet thief, whence didst thou steal thy sweet and smells, if not from my love's breath? The purple pride which on thy soft cheek for complexion dwells, in my love's veins thou hast too grossly died. The lily I condemned for thy hand, and buds of uh, marjoram had stolen thy hair. The roses fearfully on thorns did stand, one blushing shame, another white despair. A third, nor red nor white, had stolen of both, and to his robbery they annexed thy breath. But for his theft and pride of all his growth, a vengeful canker eat him up to death. More flowers I noted, yet I none could see, but sweet or color that had stolen from thee. Hundred. Okay, go for it. <laughs> You're so good. Come back to the <laughs> Where are thou, muse, that thou for forgots forgotest? So long to speak of that which gives thee all my, thy might. Spendest thou the, thy fury on some worthless song, darkening thy power to lend base subjects light. Return, forgetful muse, and straight redeem. In gentle numbers, time so idly spent, sing to the ear that doth thy lays esteem, and gives thy pen both skill and argument. Rise, resty muse, my love's sweet face survey. If time have any wrinkle, graven there, if any be a satire to decay, and make time spoils despise everywhere. Give my love fame faster than time waste life, so thou preventest his scythe and crooked knife. Beauty's truths to lay, but best is best, if never intermixed, 
because he needs no praise, wilt thou be done. Excuse not silence so, for it lies in thee. To make him much outlive a gilded tomb, and to be praised for ages yet to be. Then do thy office, muse, I teach thee how, to make him seem long hence, as he shows now. Hundred two. I'll read. My love is strengthened, though more weak in seeming. I love not less, though less the show appear. That love is merchandise, whose rich esteeming the owner's tongue doth publish everywhere. Our love was new, and then but in the spring, when I was wont to greet it with my lays, as Philomel in summer's front doth sing, and stops her pipe in growth of riper days. Not that the summer is less pleasant now than when her mournful hymns did hush the night, but that wild music burdens every bough, and sweets grown common lose their dear delight. Therefore, like her, I sometime hold my tongue, because I would not dull you with my song. Hundred three. Yeah. Alack. <laughs> <laughs> Just had to. Alack, what poverty my muse brings forth, that having such a scope to show her pride, the argument I'll bear is of more worth than when it hath my added praise beside. O oh, blame me not, if I no more can write. Look in your glass, and there appears a face that overgoes my blunt invention quite, dulling my lines, and doing me disgrace. Were it not sinful, then, striving to mend, to mar the subject that before was well, for to no other pass my verses tend than off your graces and your gifts to tell, and more, much more, than in my verse in set, your own glass shows you when you look on it. Mm -hmm. four, to me, fair friend, you never can be old, for as you were when you first saw I looked. Such seems your beauty still, three winters cold, half from the forest shook three summers pride. Three beauteous springs to yellow autumn turned, in process with the seasons I have seen. Three April perfumes and three hot Junes burned since, I first, since first I saw you fresh with yellow green. Ah, yet yeah, doth beauty like a dial at hand, steal from his figure and no pace perceived. So, so your sweet hue, which methinks doth still doth stand, hath motion in mine eye, may be deceived. For fear of which, hear this, thou age unbred, ere you were born, as beauty summer's dead. Hundred five. Let not my love be called idolatry nor my beloved as an idle show, since all alike my songs and praises be to one of one, still such and ever so. Kind is my love today, tomorrow kind, still constant in wondrous excellence. Therefore, my verse to constancy confined, one thing expressing leaves out indifference, leaves out difference. Fair, kind, and true is all my argument, fair, kind, and true, varying to other words. And in this change is my invention spent, three themes in one, which wondrous scope affords. Fair, kind, and true, have, have often lived alone, which three, till now, never kept seat in one. No pressure, Griffin, but Henry VI is my favorite. You're assigned oh. for it. I am? Do you want to read it instead? Yeah, we yeah. can do it. Trade. Yeah. You guys should read it at the same time together. No. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Are you sure? Did we skip, did I, did we skip like, my part? Like the ones on schedule for it? Yeah. yeah. You were thinking about it. It's, it's all like, on record now. I came yeah. in time. I came like at yeah. five. <laughs> Are you really sure I can read your song? Okay. I'll try not to screw it. But it doesn't matter, right? Sorry. <laughs> I don't want to get to read it anymore. Yeah. Okay. All right. So much pressure. When in the chronicle of wasted time, I see descriptions of the fairest whites and beauty making beautiful old rhyme in praise of ladies dead and lovely knights, then in the blazon of sweet beauty's best, of hand, of foot, of lip, of eye, of brow, I 
I see their antique pen would have expressed, even such beauty as you master now. So all their praises are but prophecies of this our time, all you prefiguring. And for they looked but with divining eyes, they had not skill enough your worth to sing. For we, which now behold these present days, have eyes to wonder, but lack tongues to praise. Seven. Not mine own fears, nor the prophetic souls of the wide world dreaming on things to come, can yet the lease of my true love control, supposed as forfeit to a confined doom. The mortal moon hath her eclipse endured, and the sad augurs mock their own presage. Incertainties now crown themselves assured, and peace proclaims olives of endless age. Now with the drops of this most balmy time, my love looks fresh, and death to me subscribes. Since spite of him I live in this poor rhyme, while he insults or dull and speechless tribes, and thou in this shalt find thy monument when tyrants' crests and tombs of brass are spent. 108. What's in the brain that ink may character, which hath not figured to be my true spirit? What's new to speak, what new to register that may express my love or thy dear merit? Nothing, sweet boy. But yet, like prayers divine, I must each day say o'er the very same. Counting no old thing old, thou mine, I thine, even as when I first hallowed thy even as when first I hallowed thy fair name. So that eternal love in love's fresh case weighs not the dust and in injury of age, nor gives to necessary wrinkles place, but makes antiquity for I his pain. Finding the first conceit of love there bred, where time and outward form would show it dead. I'll do. Right. Oh, never say that I was false of heart. Thou absence seemed my flame to qualify. As easy might I from my soul depart, as from my soul from which I thy breast thought fly. That is my home of love, and if I have reigned, like him that travels, I return again, just to the time, not with the time I exchange, so that myself bring water for my for my stay. Never believe thou in my nature reign. All frail seas that besiege, all kinds flood, that it could be so preposterously be stained, to leave for nothing all thy sum of good. For nothing this wide universe I call. Save thou my rose, and if thou art my all, mark my all. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Alas, tis true I have gone here and there, and made myself motley to the view, gored my own thoughts, sold cheap what is most dear, made old offenses of affections new. Most true it is that I have looked on truth, Scants and strangely, but by all above, these blenches gave my heart another youth, and worse essays proved thee my best of love. Now all is done, have what shall have no end. Mine appetite I never more will grind. On newer proof, to try an older friend, a god in love to whom I am confined. Then give me welcome. Next, my heaven, the best, even to thy pure and most loving breast. Eleven. I'm going to peace out. <laughs> Goodbye, camera. <laughs> Need a ghost in the Senate? It's okay. important. Are we going to read it on that way? I'm sorry. <laughs> <He's> <laughs> oh, for my sake, do you with fortune chide? The guilty goddess of my harmful deeds, that did not better for my life provide, 
than public means which public manners breeds. Thence comes it that my name receives a brand, and almost thence my nature is subdued to what it works in like the dyer's hand. Pity me then and wish I were renewed, whilst like a willing patient I will drink potions of ice against my strong infection. No bitterness that I will bitter think, nor double penance to correct correction. Pity me then, dear friend, and I assure you, even that your pity is enough to cure me. Okay. Read it. <clears throat> your love and pity doth the impression fill, which vulgar scandal stamped upon my brow. For what care I who calls me well or ill? So you or green my bad, my good allow? You are my all the world, and I must strive to know my shames and praises from your tongue. None else to me, nor I to none alive, that my steeled sense of ch or my, that my steeled sense or changes right or wrong. In so profound abysm, I throw all care of others' voices that my adder sense to critic and to flatter stop it are. Mark how with my neglect I do dispense. You are so strongly in my purpose bred that all the world besides me thinks are dead. You should. <laughs> Since, okay. One thirteen. Since I left you, my my eye is in my mind, and that which governs me to go about that part is function and is partly blind, seems seen, but effectually is out, for it no form delivers to the heart of bird, of flower, or shape which it doth latch. Of his quick, a quick ob object had the mind no part, nor his own vision holds what it doth catch. For if it is, see the rudest or gentlest sight, the most sweet favor or deformed creature the mountain or the sea, the day or night, the crow or dove, it shapes them to your feature, and capable of more replete with you, my most true mind thus makes mine eye untrue. 114. Oh, there doth my mind, being crowned with you, drink up the monarch's plague and its flattery, or whether shall I say, mine eye saith truth, and yet your love taught alchemy. To make of monsters and things indigest, such cherubims as your sweet self resemble, creating every bad a perfect best, as fast as objects to his beams assemble. O oh, tis to the first this flattery in my seeing, and my great mind most kingsly drinks it up. Mine eye well knows what with his guest is green, and to his palate doth prepare the cup. If it be poisoned, tis the lesser sin, that mine eye loves it, and doth first begin. I'll do it. My exit. <laughs> those lines that I before have writ do lie, even those that said I could not love you dearer. Yet then my judgment knew no reason why my most full flame should afterwards burn clearer. But reckoning time, whose million accidents creep in twixt vows and change decrees of kings. Can sacred beauty blunt the sharp, the sharpest intents, divert strong minds to the course of altering things? Alas, why, fearing of time's tyranny, might I not then say, now I love you best? When I was certain over uncertainty, crowning the present, doubting of the rest? Love is a babe, then might I not say so? to give full growth to that which still doth grow? 116. Can I read it? I love this one. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Let me not to the marriage of true minds admit impediments. Love is not love which alters when it alteration finds or bends with the water to remove. Oh no, it is an ever-fixed mark, 
that looks on tempest and is never shaken. It is the star to every wandering bark, whose worst unknown always height be taken. Love's not time's fool, though rosy lips and cheeks within his bending sickle's compass come. Love alters not with his brief hours and weeks, but bears it out even to the edge of doom. If this be error, and upon me proved, I never writ, nor no man ever loved. Accuse, yeah. Accuse me thus, that I have scant it all, wherein I should your greatest deserts repay. Forgot upon your dearest love to call, whereto all bonds do tie me day by day, that I have frequent been with unknown minds, and given to time your own dear purchased right, that I have hoisted sail to all the winds, which should transport me farthest from your sight. Book both my willfulness and errors down, and on just proof surmise accumulate. Bring me within the level of your frown, but shoot not at me in your wakened hate, since my appeal says I did strive to prove the constancy and virtue of your love. Let us to make our appetites more keen, with eager compounds we our palate urge. As to prevent our maladies unseen, we sicken to shun sickness when we purge. Even so, being full of your near clothing sweetness, to bitter sauces did I frame my feeding, and sick of welfare found a kind of meetness to be diseased ere that there was true meaning. Thus policy and love to anticipate the ills that were not grew to fall to sure, and brought to medicine a healthful state, which rank of goodness would by ill be cured. But thence I learn and find the lesson true, drugs poison him that so fell sick of you. Potions have I drunk of siren tears, distilled from the best foul was held within, applying fears to hopes and hopes to fears, still losing when I saw myself to win. What wretched errors hath my heart committed, whilst it hath thought itself so blessed never? How have mine eyes out of their spheres been fitted in the distraction of this, in the distraction of this maddening fever? A benefit of ill, now I find true that better is by evil still made better, and ruined love when it is built anew, grows fairer than at first, more strong, far greater. So I return rebuked to my content, and gain by ill throws more than I have spent. That you were once and kind befriends me now, and for that sorrow which I then did feel, needs must I under my transgression go, unless my nerves were brass or hammered steel. For if you were by my unkindness shaken, as I by yours, you'd pass to hell of time, and I, a tyrant, tyrant, have no leisure taken to weigh how once I suffered in your crime. Oh, that our night of woe might have remembered my deepest sense, how hard true sorrow is, and soon to you, as you to me have then tendered the humble soul which wounded bosom fits. But that your trespass not becomes a foe, a fee, might ransom yours, and yours must ransom me. Tis better to be vile than vile esteemed, when not to be receives reproach of being, and the just pleasure lost, which is so deemed, not by our feeling, but by others' seeing. For why should others' false adulterate eyes give salutation to my sportive blood, or on my frailties why are frailer spies, which in their wills count bad what I think good. No, I am that I am, and they that level at my abuses reckon up their own. I may be straight, though they themselves be bevel, 
by their rank thoughts and my deeds must not be shown. Unless this general evil they maintain, all men are bad and in their badness reign. Thy gift, thy tables are within my brain, full characters with, with lasting memory, which shall above the idle mark remain, beyond all date even to eternity. Or at the least, so long as brain and heart have faculty by nature to subsist, till each trip to raise oblivion yield his part of thee, thy record can never be missed. That poor attention could not so much hold, nor need I tally if I dear love to score. Therefore, to give them from me, I was bold to trust these tables that receive thee more, to keep an adjunct to remember thee, or to import forgetfulness in me. Do it. Just commit to it. Commit to it. See that line works. It does. No time. One twenty three. No time. Thou shalt not boast that I do change. Thy pyramids built up with newer mind to me are nothing novel, nothing strange. They are but dressings of a former sight. Our dates are brief, and therefore we admire. But though it is voiced upon us that is old, and rather make them born to our desire, than think that we before have heard them told, thy registers and thee I both defy, not wondering at the present nor the past, for thy records and what we both that lie, we see that lie. Made more or less by thy continual haste, this I do vow, and this shall ever be. I will be true despite thy sky and thee. 124. If my dear love were but the child of state, it might for fortune's bastard be unfathered, as subject to time's love or to time's hate, Weeds among weeds, or flowers with flowers gathered. No, it was builded far from accident. It suffers not in smelling pomp, nor falls under the blow of thralled discontent, whereto the, where the inviting time our fashion calls. It fears not policy, that heretic, which works on leases of short numbered hours, but all alone stands hugely politic that it nor grows with heat nor drowns with showers. To this I witness call the fools of time, which die for goodness, who have lived for crime. Um, were it taught me to me, I bore the canopy, with my extern the outward honoring, or laid great bases for eternity, which proves more short than waste of ruining. Have I not seen dwellers on form and favor lose all and more by paying too much rent? For compound sweet, foregoing simple savor, pitiful thrivers in their gazing spent? No, let me be obsequious in thy heart, and take thou my oblation, poor but free, which is not mixed with seconds, knows no art, but mutual render, only me for thee. Hence thou suborn informer, a true soul, when most impeached, stands least in thy control. No, you can read others. They're okay. just going faster than we expected. Do you want to read 126? Sure. Or do you want to take a minute? <laughs> Maybe a minute, Mark. Okay. Okay. 126? Just read it. Yeah. Oh, you. I? Yes, okay. do it. Oh, thou, my lovely boy, who in thy power does four times fickle glass and stickle his sickle arm? Who has by waning grown, and there is showest thy love, lovers withering as thy sweet self grows. If nature, so great mistress <coughs> over wrath, as thou goest onward still, will pluck thee back. She keeps thee to this purpose, 
that our skill may time disgrace and wretched minutes kill. Yet fear her, O thou minion of her pleasure, she may detain, but not still keep her treasure. Her audit, though delayed, answered must be, and her quietus is to render thee. 127. It's all free for all at this point, so you should In the old age, Bach was not counted fair, or if it were, it bore not beauty's name. But now is black beauty's successive heir, and beauty slandered with a bastard shame. For since each hand hath put on nature's power, bearing the foul with art's false borrowed face, sweet beauty hath no name, no holy bower, but is profaned, if not lives in disgrace. Therefore my mistress' eyes are raven black, her eyes so suited as they mourners seem, at such who, not worth fair, no beauty lack, slandering creation with a false esteem. Yet so they mourn, becoming of their woe, that every tongue says beauty should look so. Sure. Can you tell me your name? <coughs> Kaisa, C-A-I-S-A. Okay, um, once you read, you can grab the sure. sticker. It's your reward. Perfect. <laughs> um, okay. How oft, when thou my music, music plays, upon that blessed wood whose motion sounds, with thy sweet fingers when thou gently swayest, the wiry concord that my ear confounds, do I envy those jacks that nimble leap to kiss the tender inward of thy hand, whilst for, whilst my poor lips, which should that harvest reap, at the wood's boldness by the blushing stand, to be so tickled they would change their state and situation with those dancing chips. Does it go on? I'm sorry. I'm trying to lie. Are there four? Are there four more lines? Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> O'er whom thy fingers walk with gentle gait, making dead wood more blessed than living lips. Mm -hmm. Since saucy jacks so happy are in this, give them thy fingers, me thy lips to kiss. Mm -hmm. 129. Good one. I'm good. <laughs> yeah. The expense of a spirit in a waste of shame is lust in action, until action lust is perjured, murderous, bloody, full of blame. Savage, extreme, crude, cruel, not to trust. Enjoyed no sooner, but despised straight. Past reason haunted, and no sooner had. Past reason hated, as a swallowed bait. On purpose laid to make the taker mad. Mad in pursuit, and in possession so. Had having any quest to have. Extreme, a bliss in proof, and proved a very woe. Before a joy proposed, behind a dream. All this the world knows well, well knows, yet none knows well to shun the heaven that leads men to the cell. Okay, I promised Mom I'd put this on Facebook. So could you <laughs> My mistress' eyes are nothing like the sun. Coral is far more red than her lips red. If snow be white, then why her breasts are done. If hairs be wires, black wires grow on her head. Um, I have seen roses, damasked, red, and white, yet no such roses see I in her cheeks. And in some perfumes is there more delight than in the breath that from my mistress reeks. I love to hear her speak, yet well I know that music hath a far more pleasing sound. I grant I never saw a goddess go, my mistress, when she walks, treads on the ground. And yet, by heaven, I think my love is rare. As any, she belied with false compare. Thank you. Now you can have the rice, I'm sure. What do you want? Okay. okay. <laughs> thou art as, as tyrannous, so as thou art, as those whose beauties proudly make them cruel. For well thou knowest to my dear doting heart, thou art the fairest and most precious jewel. Yet in good faith some say that thee behold, thy face hath not the power to make love groan. 
To say they err, I dare not be so bold, although I swear it to myself alone. And to be sure that is not false, I swear, a thousand groans, but thinking on thy face. One on another's neck do witness bear. Thy black is fairest in my judgment's place. In nothing art thou black save in thy deeds, and thence this slander, as I think, proceeds. Yeah. Way <laughs> harsh. I've never noticed it. Yeah. <laughs> And truly not the morning sun of heaven better becomes the gray cheeks of the east, nor that full star that ushers in, in the even doth half that glory to the sober west. As those two morning eyes become my face, oh, let it then as well be seen my heart to mourn for me, since morning doth be grace, and suit thy pity like in every part. Then I will swear beauty herself is black, and all they foul that they complexion black. Five and You're going way ahead of schedule, so. This one? So. to take this one. So you might have to. We'll just read whatever comes up. Okay? You've got 132. Right? Mm -hmm. 133. Do I read that? Or, okay. Over. No. <laughs> <laughs> Take your time. Beshrew that heart that makes my heart to groan, for that deep wound it gives my friend and me. It's not enough to torture me alone, but slave to slavery my sweetest friend must be. Me from myself thy cruel eye hath taken, and my next self thou harder hast engrossed. Of him, myself, and thee I am forsaken. A torment thrice threefold thus to be crossed. Prison my heart in thy steel bosom's ward, but then my friend's heart let my poor heart bail. Whoe'er keeps me, let my heart be his guard. Thou canst not then use rigor in my jail, and yet thou wilt, for I, being pent in thee, force am thine and all that is in me. So now I have confessed that he is thine, and I myself am mortgaged to thy will. Myself I forfeit, so that other mine thou wilt restore to be my comfort still. But thou wilt not, nor he will not be free. For thou art covetous, and he is kind. He learned, but sure he liked to write for me under that bond that him is fast doth bind. The statute of thy beauty thou wilt take, thou usurer that puts forth all to use, and sue a friend came debtor for my sake, so him I lose through my unkind abuse. Him have I lost, thou hast both him and me. He pays the whole, and yet am I not free. Whoever hath her wish, thou hast thy will, and will to boot, and will in overplus. More than enough am I that vex thee still, to be to thy sweet will making addition thus. Will thou, whose will is large and spacious, not once vouchsafe to hide my will in Shall will in others seem right gracious, and in my will no fair acceptance shall? The sea all water, it receives rain still, 
and in abundance added to the store. So thou, being rich in will, add to thy will one will of mine to make thy large will. Let no unkind, no fair beseechers heal. Think all the Swear to thy blind soul that I was thy will, and will thy soul knows is admitted there. Thus far for love, my love sweet, sweet fulfill, will will fulfill the treasure of thy love. I fill it full with wills, and my will one, and things of great receipt with ease we prove. Among a number one is reckoned none, then in the number let me pass untold, though in thy soul's account I one must be. For nothing hold me, so it please thee hold, that nothing me is something sweet to thee. But make but my name thy love, and love that still, and then thou lovest me for my name as well. And Thou blind fool love, what dost thou to mine eyes that they behold and see not what they see? They know what beauty is, see where it lies, yet what the best is take the worst to be. If eyes corrupt by over partial looks, be anchored in the bay where all men ride. Mm -hmm. Why of eyes falsehood hast thou forged hooks where to the judgment of my heart is tied? Why should my heart think that a several plot, which my heart knows the wide world is commonplace? Or mine eyes, seeing this, say this not, to put fair truth upon so foul a face? In things right true my heart and eyes have erred, and to this false plague are they now transferred. When my love swears that she is made of truth, I do believe her, though I know she lies. That she might think me some untutored youth, unlearned in the world's false subtleties. Thus vainly thinking that she thinks me young, although she knows my days are past the best. Simply I credit her false speaking tongue. On both sides thus is simple truth suppressed. But wherefore says she not she is unjust? And wherefore say not I that I am old? O oh, love's best habits is in seeming trust, and age in love loves not to have years told. Therefore I lie with her and she with me, and in our faults by lies we flattered be. O oh, call not me to justify the wrong that thy kind that thy unkindness lays upon my heart. Wound me not with thine eye, but with thy tongue. Use power with power, and slay me not by art. Tell me thou lovedst, lovedst elsewhere, but in my sight, dear heart, forbear to glance thine eye side. What needs thou wound with cunning when thy might is more than my oppressed defense can bide? Let me excuse thee, ah, my love well knows, her Pretty looks have been mine enemies, and therefore from my face she turns my foes, that they elsewhere might dart their injuries. Yet do not so, but since I am near slain, kill me outright with looks and rid my pain. One forty. Be wise as thou art cruel. Do not press my tongue-tied patience with too much disdain. Lest sorrow lend me words, and words express the manner of my pity-wanting pain. If I might teach thee wit, better it were, though not to love, yet love to tell me so. As testy sick men, when their deaths be near, no news but health from their physician can 
from their physicians know. For if I should despair, I should grow mad, and in my madness might speak ill of thee. Now this ill-resting world is, gr is grown so bad, mad slanders by mad ears, believe it be. That I might not be so, nor thou belied, bear thine, thine eyes straight, though thy proud heart go wide. 141. In faith I do not love thee with mine eyes, for they in thee a thousand errors note. But tis my heart that loves what they despise, who in despite of you is pleased to dote. Nor are mine ears with thy tongue's tune delighted, nor tender feeling to base touches prone, nor taste nor smell, desire to be invited to any sensual feast with thee alone. But my five wits, nor my five senses can, dissuade one foolish heart from serving thee, who leaves unswayed the likeness of a man. Thy proud heart's slave uh, and vassal wretch to be, only my plague thus far I count my gain, that she makes me sin, awards me pain. As a careful housewife runs to catch one of her feathered creatures broke away, sets down her babe and makes all swift dispatch in pursuit of the thing she would have stay, whilst her neglected child holds her in chase, cries to catch her whose busy care is bent to follow that which flies before her face, not prizing her poor infant's discontent, so runs thou after that which flies from thee. Will die, thy babe, chase thee afar behind. But if thou catch thy hope, turn back to me and play the mother's mother's part. Kiss me, be kind. So will I pray that thou mayst have thy will, if thou turn back in my loud crying still. Two loves I have of comfort and despair, which like two spirits do suggest me still. The better angel is a man right, right fair, the worse your spirit a woman colored ill. To win me soon, to, to hell my female evil, tempteth my better angel, yeah, angel from my side, and would corrupt my saint to be a devil, wooing his purity with her foul pride. And whether that my angel turned fine, suspect I may yet directly tell, but being both from me, both to each friend, I guess one angel and another's help, yet this shall I near, never know, but live in doubt, till my bad angel fire, my good one. I'm 45. Those lips that love's own hand did make, Breathe forth the sound that said, I hate. To me that languished for her sake. But when she saw my woeful state, straight in her heart did mercy come, chiding that tongue that ever sweet was used in giving gentle dew, and taught it thus a new degree. I hate, she altered with an end, that followed it as gentle day to follow night, who like a fiend from heaven to hell is flown away. I hate from hate away she threw, and saved my life, saying, not you. Mm -hmm. So this is just a leave a, like a one meter empty. Yeah. 
Poor soul, the center of thy sinful earth, these rebel powers that thee erode, why dost thou pine within and suffer dearth, painting thy outward walls so costly gay? Why so large cost, having so short a lease? Dost thou upon thy fading mansion spend? Shall worms, inheritors of this excess, eat up thy charge? Is this thy body's end? Then, soul, live thou upon thy servant's loss, and let that pine to aggravate thy store. By terms divine and selling hours of dross, within be fed, without be rich no more. So shalt thou feed on death that feeds on men, and death once dead, there's no more dying men. So there are eight more left, so commit to one. <laughs> Go for it. One forty seven. My love is as a fever, longing still for that which longer nurseth the disease, feeding on that which doth preserve the ill, the uncertain sickly appetite to please. My reason, the physician of my love, angry that his prescriptions are not kept, hath left me, and I desperate now approve, desire is death, which physic did accept. Past cure I am, no reason is past care, and frantic mad with evermore unrest. My thoughts and my discourse as madmen's are, at random from the truth vainly expressed. For I have sworn thee fair and thought thee bright, who art as black as hell, as dark as night. 148. Do you want to read? Sure. <laughs> Can you tell me your name? Uh, Jalen, J-A-L-I-N. O me, what eyes have love put in my head, which have no correspondent with true sight. Or if they have, where is my judgment fled, that censures falsely what they see aright? If that be fair wrong, my false eyes don't, what means the world to say it is not so? If it be not, then love doth well denote love's eye is not so true as all men's know. How can it? Oh, how can love's eye be true that is so vexed with watching and with tears? No marvel then, though I mistake my view. The sun, the sun itself sees not till heaven clears. O cunning love, with tears thou keeps me blind, lest eyes will sing thy foul faults should find. 149. Canst thou, O cruel, say I love thee not, when I against myself with thee partake? Do I not think on thee when I forgot, am of myself, all tyrant for thy sake? Who hateth thee that I do call my friend? On whom <coughs> fronts thou, thou that I do fawn upon? Nay, if thou lowest on me, do I not spend revenge upon myself with present moan? What merit do I in my self-respect that is so proud thy service to despise? When all my best doth worship thy defect, commanded by the motion of thine eyes. But love, hate on, for now I know thy mind, those that can see thou lovest, and I am blind. Oh, from what power hast thou this powerful might with insufficiency my heart to sway, to make me give the lie to my true sight and swear that brightness doth not grace the day? Whence hast thou this becoming of things ill, that in the very refuse of thy deeds there is such strength and warranties of skill, that in, the, in my mind thy worst all best exceeds? Who taught thee how to make me love thee more, the more I hear and see just cause of hate? Oh, thou I love what others do abhor, with others thou shouldst not abhor my state. If thy unworthiness raise love in me, more worthy I to be beloved of thee. Love is too young to know is, yet who knows not conscience is born of love? Then, gentle cheater, urge not my illness, lest guilty of my faults thy sweet self prove. For if thou betraying me, I do betray my nobler part to my gross body's treason. My soul doth tell my body that he may triumph in love. Flesh stays no farther reason. But 
rising at my name, doth point out thee as his triumphant prize. Proud of this pride, he is contented thy poor drudge to be, to stand in thy affairs, fall by thy side. No want of conscience holds it that I call her love for those for whose dear love Two more, and then Dr. Malkin is going to read the last one. I think someone else should read the last one because I've already read a lot, even though I signed up for it. So okay, someone else can have the last one. So three for all again. Okay. <laughs> so three more. 152. <laughs> okay. In loving thee, thou knowest I am forsworn, but thou art twice forsworn to me, love swearing. In act thy bed vow broke, and new faith torn, and vowing new hate after new love bearing. But why of two oaths breach do that I accuse thee, when I break twenty? I am perjured most, for all my vows are oaths but to misuse thee, and all my honest faith in thee is lost, for I have sworn deep oaths of thy deep kindness, oaths of thy love, thy truth, thy constancy, and to enlighten thee gave eyes to blindness, or made them swear against the thing they see. For I have sworn thee fair, more perjured I, to swear against the truth so foul a lie. 153. Keeper lay by his brain and fell asleep. A maid of Diane's this advantage found, and his love kindling fire did quickly steep in a cold valley fountain of that ground, which borrowed from this holy fire of love a dateless, lively heat still to endure, and grew a seething bath, which yet men prove against strange maladies a sovereign cure. But at my mistress's eye, love's brand new fired, the boy for trial needs would touch my breast. I, sick with all, the help of bath desired, and thither hide a sad, distempered guest, but found no cure. The bath for my help lies where Cupid got no fire, my mistress's eyes. 154. I know what's going to You should do it. No, I will do it. Yeah, do it. Do, do it. it. You do it. <laughs> Do it. Yeah, just, just commit. Yeah, why don't you alternate lines? That would be amazing. That would be amazing. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> I'm so excited. Uh, okay, I'll start. You start. The little love god lying once asleep. Laid by his side, his heart in flaming brand. Both many nymphs that vowed chaste life to keep. Came tripping by, but in her maiden hand. The fairest votary took up that fire which many legions of true hearts had warmed. And so the general of hot desire was sleeping by a virgin hand disarmed. This branch he quenched in a cool vabai, which from love's fire took heat perpetual, growing a bath and healthful remedy for men diseased, but I, my mistress, thrall, came there for cure, and this by that I prove. Love's fire heats water, water cools not love. Bars. Yeah. That was great. You yeah. should have just alternated throughout. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for.